Hello, everyone, and welcome to Yahoo Finance Presents. I'm Andy Serwer, along with Ford CEO Jim Hackett, UAW President Rory Gamble, and Hollywood director and actor Peter Berg. And these guys have all collaborated to work on a new documentary film called On the Line. It's a short about Project Apollo, where Ford partnered with the UAW to make PPE ventilators and masks to fight COVID-19. Uh, so congratulations on the film to all of you guys. Jim, let me start with you. How did Project Apollo come together? The inspiration really comes from a moment when I'm talking to Larry Kudlow at the White House about uh, a decision that Rory Gamble and myself and the other heads of the uh, automotive companies had reached that we were going to be shutting down all the automotive factories and uh, I wanted the president's advisor, economic advisor, to understand that. Um, in the course of that, we were, he was talking about the ventilator shortage on the East Coast. And it wasn't tongue in cheek, but I said, you know, who knows, maybe Ford will make ventilators. And I hung up the phone and, and thought, you know, uh, we were the first to say this. Uh, we probably should get working on this. And in the history of Ford, in World War II, we made bombers, and prior to that, in, uh, with polio, we made uh, a treatment device that helped people. And so it just was natural for the company to step up. The company, the country was calling for support, and that's what lit the fuse, and the rest is the, the story that Peter tells in our short. Great. Well, Rory, um, Jim didn't make all that stuff himself. He had a lot of help from the UAW. And I'm curious about uh, the collaboration that you brought to bear with your people. You know, um, industry uh, workers in this country have always stepped to the stepped up to the call. Um, we were all facing a common enemy. Uh, our members they wanted to get involved with this project. They wanted to do something. They made, it, they made a choice to uh, volunteer their services. They could have stayed at home and stayed out of harm's way, um, but they chose to step out and come out and help make this PPE equipment. And they were very proud to do it. We actually, they needed about a thousand people. We actually had a lot more than a thousand volunteers that, you know, my phone was ringing off the hook from members who wanted to do it. Um, and, and, and the company uh, very graciously uh, volunteered all the, all the facilities and everything they needed to make this very needed and, 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 and very successful um, endeavor to make this equipment. So we're very proud to be a part of that. Um, we're very, very proud to step up and help the country face um, the fight against COVID-19. And I'm very proud of my membership for how they stepped up to the plate and, and hit a home run with this. Peter, let me talk to you about the film specifically and the genesis of it. And it sort of speaks to your work a little bit, right? You know, you've got Friday Night Lights and Deepwater Horizon and Mile 22, sort of working class people trying to get stuff done, sports action. Um, so tell us about how you got connected to this project and what attracted you. Um, I, I, I met uh, Jim and, and some of his colleagues uh, at Ford a um, couple of months minimum prior to COVID sort of uh, exploding into our, into our consciousness. And we had been talking about doing, doing a film that looked at a you know, great American company, uh, keeping up with uh, technology and innovating and what Ford was doing to stay, uh, stay very much in the game, which is something that, that, that Jim is endlessly fascinating to talk to about. Uh, and we had just started a relationship and I was starting to look into the company. COVID hit. Um, I heard very quickly about what Ford and the UAW were doing in terms of partnering to come together and start producing ventilators and other PPE equipment. Uh, I thought it was a fascinating story uh, on almost every level. Uh, I sensed that it was going to be a much needed positive story about how uh, we are capable of working with each other uh, when we decide that we want to. Uh, and I wasn't disappointed. Uh, it, it, it is 
a tremendous story. What these gentlemen and their companies or unions have done uh, is, is a story that needs to be told today, uh, living in a country and in, on a planet that is as devised, divisive and um, in many ways broken as we are. Uh, it's great to see uh, an example of where we're not broken and, and what Ford and UAW did uh, with po Project Apollo is, is my kind of story. Agreed. And, and, you know, I hear what Peter is saying, Jim, about having a story that talks about people working together. What did you decide to make? In other words, there were some things that fit with, obviously, your know-how and skill set. How much are you making? How much more are you making right now? What's the process? The initial thrust was the ventilators because, you know, the, the disease uh, and its, its track was really mysterious. Um, we now have learned that we've built 50,000 of these ventilators. They're still needed, but not nearly at the rate at the beginning. Uh, the COVID causes blood clots, and so blood thinners plus some cortisone is helping. That's the therapeutics that we're hearing about helping people survive, but there's still ventilator applications, probably 30% of what was in the beginning. Uh, but the big demand came for these masks and these surgical masks, these are level three, uh, have proven in the time now that we've learned about this disease that it can keep the spread way down. And so we need everybody to wear these. So we're, we have, uh, we bought more equipment to produce them here in the United States and with our UAW partners and we're, make, we're going to make 100 million of these masks. And uh, the obligation here is to get these to the folks in nursing homes in, in, in cities where the, the, the conditions don't allow them space so the masks can help. Um, and the most vulnerable, um, you know, the, the mean age of who's dying is 77 years old. And, and uh, people of color have been hit, you know, uh, worse than others. So we just we want to follow on and make sure those folks are all taken care of. This will help us get kids back to school uh, because the, there's a reliability with these masks that is unquestioned. So uh, we're going to see that all the way through till this thing is done. And uh, Rory, how many people were involved in the in this film and did they enjoy it? And did any of them are going to uh, look to turn it into acting as a full time career and change jobs, you think, at this point? Well, I think everyone would yeah. like to uh, take up an acting career and leave a plant behind, but uh, everybody, not everyone is so privileged. But, you know, our, our members, we, right. we've got a great workforce. Um, um, working with Ford Motor Company on projects like this, are, are, they always step up to the plate, and, and they're always very congenial to work with uh, on these special projects that our members have a labor of love for. Um, but they're very honored, uh, and, 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 and our members are very honored. They are very proud um, to see those face masks go out uh, throughout the country with that Ford emblem on them. Uh, only thing I hate is that we didn't get the UAW emblem on the other side, but we can catch up down the road, uh, Jim. So, but it is, it, it, it's just, it was a labor of love. Um, we had over a thousand of our members involved with this. Uh, our tradesmen, they set the, they, they had to convert the plant over from an industrial setting to a, a, a sterile medical uh, equipment making facility. That, that is an achievement in and of itself. Uh, I'm so proud of them for that. And then our members for coming in and coming on the front line and, and saying, you know, I'm not gonna ride this out at home. I'm gonna go into work, I'm gonna help make these medical masks that are gonna serve uh, uh, our nurses and doctors and, and our essential workers on the, on the front lines of this thing. And it, it, it's just a testament uh, to their dedication and honor uh, to their country. Right. Hey, Peter, how do you distribute this type of a film? How can people see it? Um, you know, that, that, that always remains uh, to be, you know, an, an interesting question and a challenge that anybody making content makes uh, faces today. Um, you know, I think the, the bottom line is if the, if the content in the film is compelling, which this is, um, 
between all of the different platforms, this will be seen. Um, uh, you know, I mean, you know, you, a, a, a platform like YouTube now has the, the capability of reaching tens of millions of people. Um, I think that once we start showing it and people see just how compelling um, what Ford and UAW did, people will, will find it. So, you um, know, like, like every other quality piece of content, it finds its own audience and, and we'll make sure people see it. You have any thought of putting Mark Wahlberg in this thing? Uh, if, you know, if, if Jim gives the okay, I think uh, when we go to do a feature film, Wahlberg would be one of the actors. Uh, uh, Jim, uh, I'm gonna present, a, 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 I'll, I'll present many actors to Jim and then I'll try and force Wahlberg down, uh, down the pipe because you know, obviously I love Mark, but we're not committing to anything yet. Well, and, and, he, and he, he can you know, make a great the guy, the guy you're talking to, the guy you're talking to is an actor uh, in, in his own right. So maybe Peter will play me. Yeah, maybe. I'm not sure I have the range, but I, I would be willing to try. <laughs> Only if he's lucky, Jim. Hey, let me just ask you a question or two uh, about the business, as I said. How, how are things going? I understand you had signaled some some layoffs on the negative side, on the positive side. I know you're very proud of the Bronco and the Mustang coming out. And then finally, you're transitioning to another gym. Jim Farley is going to be taking over at the end of the month, I gather. A lot of stuff. Yeah, this is a, a really important time in, in our uh, evolution. Three years, it would be 41 months ago when I started the job. I talked to Bill about getting the, the product portfolio in shape. And so you just highlighted that the Bronco... Uh, it's broken all records of expectations. Uh, Roy, we're going to have to put on uh, more workers. We, we're hiring two to three thousand people in Southeast Michigan right now um, to build that. I appreciate product. that. The, my, my, yeah, the Mustang Mach E is uh, was introduced last November. Is getting ready to start to ship, and then the F one fifty. So these three products give me Andy uh, kind of a message to Wall Street that you know. Our regime is able to, to, to imagine new things from, from a different perspective and bring them to market. Uh, Jim Farley distinguished himself in this crisis as Rory Gamble did. You know, the, the gentleman on the screen today running the UAW, Rory came in in a really difficult time with some chaos in the, in the union. And he had to step right in the middle of this and he flawlessly navigated through that. Um, from my own perspective, you know, I had retired once before and uh, I, I, I let Bill know that we would agree when the time was right and it just felt right right now. The only hesitancy I have is the future's got some really great things coming. Uh, when I reached out to Peter Berg, um, I was asking him to help me think through the way that we portray an autonomous vehicle, which I don't want the world to see it as a robot. I want it to see in service of people. So there's a there's a person who can capture the humanity and things. And so you, while he's in working with us on that, he sees this uh, COVID story. And, and as you know, it'll, it'll get great acclaim. So it's a really good time uh, in the face of all this craziness uh, for me to turn it over to Jim Farley. And Rory, I'm going to let you have the last word because I heard you piping in there about uh, the good news that uh, the Bronco is going to be ramping up and maybe needing more of your workers. And Ford makes more cars and trucks in the U.S. than any other automaker. How important is that American manufacturing uh, for the U.S. economy and for your people? Well, this pandemic has truly highlighted the, the importance of American manufacturing. Not only autos, but medical equipment, uh, prescriptions. I mean, uh, this pandemic has showed us that we've let too much of our manufacturing go out of this country and we no longer control it. Uh, I'm very proud of Ford Motor Company uh, with the amount of manufacturing they've maintained in America uh, when they could have offshored a lot of product and, and, and made even more profit. So that's to be commended. It's a great example for every other manufacturer as well that they should be doing the same thing. Um, sell here, build here, and, and employ uh, great uh, American workers uh, in building and supporting uh, America. All right, we're going to leave it at that. Jim Hackett, Rory Gamble, and Peter Berg, thank you, gentlemen, so much thank for your time. You. Congratulations on the film, and best of luck to you.